It's an absolute pleasure to be with you all today. I'm, I'm really, really excited. I've been looking forward to this for a long time and I planned that it would be on today, the 4th of May. So may the 4th be with you as well if, you, if you're celebrating Star Wars Day. So I'm gonna share my screen. Okay, so uh, as Anne said, my name is Maria Wojciechowska Kanida, and I'm going to share with you today how we can nurture and grow contemplative photography practices for our own well-being and creativity. Before I start, I know that March 2020, the date, the, that calendar date will be ingrained on many of us for a very long time, if not forever. But that was a day that changed for me. I was a primary school teacher and I left my classroom on that Friday saying to my children that I would come back. And I never, I never went back. I never saw the children again. And my whole life changed. I was very insular. I did a lot of training around Southeast London where I'm based, but I found this wonderful person, this wonderful organization, the Steve Sinnott Foundation. And I was checking today how many events I'd attend. I'd been attended. I think I've almost attended all of them. And during every single one, they impacted me so much from the wonderful course with Will Thomas, um, with some wonderful coaching from Hema Patel, who's now my life coach. And I always thought, I wonder if I can be brave enough one day to suggest to Anne that um, maybe I'll do a session. So here I am today. So thank you so much. So an outline for this session, we've got about an hour together. I'd like to be able to share some contemplative photography ideas for well-being and creativity. I'd like to be able to inspire you to use these practices as a way to support your daily well-being. And also I'm gonna give you opportunities, there's gonna be three opportunities for you to engage in some practical activities and maybe adapt them for yourself or for your organization. So I'm gonna start off by sharing this little girl. This little girl is very dear to my heart. She is eight years old in this photo, uh, it was 1982. And um, you can see the cheeky little dimple here, you know it's me. This little girl was given uh, the family camera at the age of eight. So you can work out how old I am. At the age of eight, and I went on a school trip and my dad said to me to only take four photos. And I ended up taking five. And it got me hooked on photography. I don't know what it was about photography that I really enjoyed. I, I wanted to do something with photography, but I didn't quite know what it was yet. Went to college, I studied photography, then I became a teacher, my, uh, my degrees in drama and technology. And then I started my road to being a primary school teacher. I've taught from year six, that's 11 year olds, um, all the way through um, year three as well. I've taught year three, four, five, and six over 24 years. And then something called me to do something else, which was very strange. I didn't think I was gonna be called to do something, but I was called with the guy that I was going out with, um, who's now my husband, to go traveling around Europe. Now, I thought I was crazy. My family thought I was crazy, but we did it. We traveled around Europe for six months in a very old camper van, but inside it had everything that we needed. It had a toilet, had a shower, it had beds, it had a cooker, and it was just the wonderful experience that I had. But I'd left teaching to go on this adventure. And I went to different places. I went to Slovenia. This is the river Socha, which is, if you've ever been to Slovenia, it is so cold. It's about five degrees Celsius, even in the midst of summer. The color is amazing. And whilst my husband, wasn't my husband then, but my boyfriend. So while my husband was flying in competitions, he's a paragliding pilot, I was taking photos. I was taking photos and writing and doing something completely different. This is me feeding the swans in Lake Geneva. I went to Switzerland as well. It was absolutely beautiful, stunning. I'd never been anywhere in Europe. I'm, I'm from Spanish descent. So my parents are both Spanish. I was born in England, um, but I'd only really been to Spain. So to go to all these wonderful places in Europe was incredible. 
And finally, we found ourselves in Ronda. Ronda, this is in Spain. And after six months, I wondered what it was my next adventure was going to be. And I didn't really know what it was. I knew I was no longer a teacher, but I thought, right, what, what is it that I really enjoy? I really enjoy photography and I really enjoy teaching. So in 2011, when we got back, I established my own company and it's called Arcuiris Learning because Arcuiris means, Arcuiris means rainbow in Spanish. And I love a rainbow. I know as a child, I was always organizing all my things in rainbow colors. I still organize the cat food in, in rainbow colors. And for me, rainbows are a real symbol of hope. And it gave me an opportunity to think differently. I was no longer a teacher, a member of the senior leadership team. I could do anything that I wanted to do. So once I started, it led me to teach creative photography. So I was teaching to year three, four, five, and six, some creative photography. And these are two of my favorite photos. The top one is by uh, an eight-year-old girl called Bella. And it was, um, the official lesson was about complementing backgrounds. So the lemon yellow and the complementing backgrounds, but I nicknamed it googly eyes because who doesn't love some googly eyes? I brought the googly eyes into the school. They absolutely loved it. That's a very poignant picture. She won creative photography, creative photographer of the year 2018 when we had our central London exhibition because I gave her the opportunity to choose any fruit and she chose that lemon. And as I was walking around, I noticed that the lemon had a little dirty mark on it, had a little kind of scar. And I said to her, Bella darling, do you want to change your fruit? And she said to me, no, I'm good. And when she came away and she created that, she named that photo, when life gives you lemons, turn them into a smile. It, it gives me goosebumps even talking about it now. It was absolutely incredible. And it gave the children such a sense of confidence, self-esteem, a place in the world that I'd not seen as a teacher before. The bottom one, the children always ask me, can I eat the sweeties afterwards? And I always say, well, maybe if you go and say to your family, they might be able to buy them for you. But, but these are for the photography, but it was just wonderful. And then that led me on to doing some contemplative photography. During my, I do, I created a, a program of learning grade one to grade seven, obviously with the different rainbow colors. And one session of the con creative photography was about contemplative photography. I was working in some Christian and Catholic schools and I thought, I wonder what it is that I can do with them to encourage them to be contemplative. So it led from creative to contemplative. And over the years, I had a really good bank of ideas. So I thought, right, what can I do next? So this year, last month, I published a book. Um, it's called Encounters with God, and it's using imaginative prayer and contemplative prayer, uh, contemplative photography with children. And I also, that led to me going into schools. I travel around the country now, um, giving continuing professional development, CPD, to, to primary schools. I thought it was going to end there, but it hasn't because I'm also now in collaboration with another company to look at how I can look at harmony within nature and how I can provide imaginative experiences with all schools, not just schools who have a religious faith or worldview. And not to end there, it's also led me on to making, I'm trying to fund my own work as well. So I make some circles of hope the one in the top right corner, that was my spring edition I made last year. The rainbow one, I made that for pride and I made, I made sure that there was a little heart inside as well. My niece has that one. And this year I've been making some chakra um, circles of hope. So there's lots of strings to my bow, but I know that everything I do, I do for this little girl, I do for this person, I do for me. And I always go back to Søren Kierkegaard, who is the, a Danish philosopher, who says that life can only be understood backwards, but it must live, be lived forwards. And I've certainly lived my life forwards and I haven't realized how lots of things have connected to each other, but understanding now that my dad giving me the family camera at that age, at the age of eight, changed my life. It planted seeds of, of hope in my heart. So that's a little bit about me. I'd like to talk now a little bit about individual pathways and what do you enjoy? So for example, do you enjoy gathering with others? Or do you enjoy 
learning about something? Do you enjoy serving your community or your global community? Or do you enjoy being with nature or yourself? So I'm gonna give you a bit of time. If you've got um, a pencil, paper, something to write with, you might think just to have some notes, just to see whether this might be calling you. It, do you enjoy things that involve a gathering? So do you enjoy following a calendar of events with other people? A bit like this as well. Do you value having a practice with others, observing the same practice? So it might be a yoga practice, a meditation practice, an art class, uh, going to the gym together, swimming. Do you enjoy attending workshops that teaches me how to further my practice with others? And do you enjoy music and celebrating with others? If so, you may have a gathering. You enjoy gathering with other people. These, I, these statements I've adapted from a book by Dr. My Myra Perrin. Um, it's called, What's Your God Language? And I was studying for my master's with it, but I thought it was so prevalent that actually it, it helped me to understand a lot of other things as well. Now, what about learning? Do you read a lot of books? Do you love to learn more about a topic that you're interested in? Or do you love learning something new? Or discussing topics with others? Or enjoy listening to a renowned speaker about some solid research? Maybe the things that you enjoy are learning. So we had gathering, learning. And we're thinking about our individual pathways. What are we individually drawn to? Is it a serving aspect that you enjoy? Essential that injustice is confronted and you're compelled to take action. It might be through a charity, it might be through an event. Are you inspired by people taking positive action to change unjust conditions of the world? Or being a caring person who is called to action, is that something that's very important to you? That might be a service that you enjoy, your individual pathway is to serve. And finally, the being aspect. Do you find yourself refreshed being outdoors with nature? Or enjoying time alone or in stillness or in meditation? Or do you love the thought of using or creativity in your life? Or are you lifted up when all your senses are inspired? So we had gathering, learning. I've got the last one. I'm gonna go back, serving and being. So today's session is all about contemplative photography. It's about the being aspect of it, but obviously you follow the pathway that calls you. And it might not always be the one that you want to do. Maybe you might be called to do some learning at some point and you might want to switch. I know that last year, I've in the office that I'm here now, I was all about painting and drawing. I'm not called to do that anymore. I'm called to do other things, I'm called to do some weaving and some crafting, but that's okay. Because it's a bit like making bread. This photo I took, hearts follow me everywhere. I, I notice hearts everywhere in the floor, in, when I cut something, and, and that was a, a walnut that I cut in half. It was just perfect. And it reminds me that actually to take part in the eating of the bread, there had to have been the making of the bread, the collecting of the wheat, the combining of the ingredients, all of those things. And this quote is from the, the late Thich Nhat Hanh, who passed away recently. I think his, it was a few days ago, was this 100 days of passing. And he said, look deeply and you notice the sunshine in the bread the blue sky in the bread, the cloud and the great earth in the bread. Can you tell me which is not in a piece of bread? The whole cosmos has come together in order to bring you this piece of bread. So anything that you feel called to do creatively for your well-being is okay for you today. If it changes, that's great. If you feel called to do something that hasn't quite happened yet, try it out. See how that contributes to your own well-being. So 
So I'd like to share with you now how the hashtag contemplative photography started. I was in bed in January, feeling a bit cold, feeling a bit miserable, not quite sure what I was doing in my life again. And I thought, I want to have somebody telling me some inspirational quotes. So I have a morning um, quiet time. I have a meditative practice and sometimes that involves words and sometimes it involves me just visualizing some positive things. And I thought, I really wish somebody could tell me something nice about myself today. So on my Instagram account, I just thought, well, I'd like somebody to tell me how amazing I am. And I thought, well, if I want to know that, I wonder if somebody else will want to know that as well. So I just put that out there. I wonder if you know how amazing you are. And all these photos are photos that I've made and they, they stay in my phone. I mean, if somebody said to me, you know, how many, you know, what photos did you take yesterday? I'd have to literally scroll quite, quite far down because I'm, I'm, also, I'm always taking photos. I call them make photos from um, the photographer Ansel Adams. Um, he used to make photos in Yosemite Park in North America, and he talked about um, creating photos. Nobody will ever see them in the same way as you are doing. So when I talk to the children, I always say you're making photos rather than taking. Taking sounds quite consumer. So all these photos you'll see I've taken, I've made. And so the next day I thought, right, what else have I got on my camera roll? I thought, right, I'll, I'll, I'll just see what else I've got. And maybe I'll just put a little quote on there. So every time you try you get better. And so each day I would find something else. And sometimes I would look, you know, way, way far, far, far away a lot, a long time ago. And this was my, my niece is um, nine now, but this is when she was three years old and um, she just abandoned her, her little crocs, you know, where they were. And I just made a photo of it. Didn't realize that you know, years later, something would come of it. But I thought, you know, I wonder where you'd like to walk barefoot. And if people comment on it or reply, that's OK. And if they don't, that's OK. It's nice to be able to put something out there. And sometimes they're questions. And sometimes there's a story behind it. So I um, I'd applied for a contract and it didn't quite work out the way that I wanted it to. And um, I was quite cross with myself and cross with the world and cross with the universe. and. It just reminded me that, you know, people say, you know, plan A doesn't work out, plan B. And I thought, well, there are so many different letters of the alphabet. You know, in the English alphabet, it's 26. In the Spanish alphabet, there's a lot more. In the Polish alphabet, there's even more. And it's not the only option. You know, try another letter. And um, it was quite funny because I know that that F in the middle, <laughs> you know, has some significance for me. And I just wanted to share these images with the world. And just to give a little bit of hope. And so I started this, I think, 12 weeks ago. And, and every day it's become part of my morning practice as well. And sometimes I find it quite difficult to come up with the words. And I I'm led by what I think I need to hear or what other people need to hear. And sometimes I remember the children. I talked to you about earlier on about Bella saying when life gives you lemons, you know, turn them into a smile. And I thought, well... When life gives you lemons, turn them into lemonade. What else could I say? And this is one of my favorite ones. It just shows how quirky I am. You know, I was cooking, making some biscuits. When life gives you cookie dough, choose your own cookie cutter. Do something different. Choose. We all have that power to choose. Also, I go on a Sunday contemplative walk. I have got local woods where I am and I've always got pockets full of stuff. So I usually collect little pieces of pottery, but on one day that I went out, I just collected these random things. I thought, I don't even know what they, they don't even make sense. But actually sometimes the connection isn't immediately obvious. You just have to keep going. I didn't know that that camera that my dad gave me at the age of eight would have made any difference to my life now, 40 years later, that I'm able to share what I have and what I do. So, I'm going to encourage you now to take a bit of time to look through your camera roll on your device, or if you have some photos around you, wherever you are. And I'm gonna invite you to choose a statement to go with it, or a wonder question, or a question to complement it. And then here is a 
uh, QR code if you have the ability to scan it on your phone. Otherwise, Anne will put the link to the Padlet. I'm going to share the screen for the Padlet just so you can see if you're unfamiliar with Padlet, it was the first time. We've got an image of a, a lemon tree and one of our colleagues has said, why do I feel so happy and contented when sitting under this lemon tree? Gorgeous. I'd like to sit under that lemon tree. And there's a beautiful picture called Magic Hour. The magic hour with old friends, the sunlight dimming, but the memory warming me now. Ooh, that's beautiful. That's gorgeous. And there's the picture here of a cactus. The vine and the prickly pear, so different, but living and growing in harmony. It's a beautiful word, harmony. Thank you for sharing that. And Anne's idea of happiness. Happiness is a coffee and a sea view. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much. And this is just one way in which those photos, which we take, which we make, which we create, can actually be brought to life again and not just sit in our device or sit in a frame and, and the stories want to be told. Oh, and that's a lovely, oh, that's lovely. That reminds me of being in Spain, that watermelon, really nice cold watermelon. That's gorgeous, thank you. And I'm going to come back to my original presentation. And because each year our career is learning, we, focus on a different charity. This year, um, we've asked the Steve Sinnott Foundation to be our chosen charity. So these cards will be available on the Etsy shop. They were supposed to arrive today, but they haven't. So keep a lookout in the Etsy shop and any that you put in, any that you want to buy from the shop, if you put the code SSF2022, then you'll receive a 20% off. So the, like I said, the percentage of the profits are being donated to the Steve Sinnott Foundation for this year. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit now about journaling. I know I've attended so many courses on the importance of journaling, that journaling is really good for your gratitude, that it's good to, to help you. And I have tried time and time again to get into journaling and not been very successful. So I thought I want to try something different. So I'm going to stop sharing here and I'm going to show you on my second camera I've got here. You should be able to see my journal that I've got here. So this is a journal that I have and it's a journal full of some inspirational words. And I wanted to commit myself to doing a journal, but I have a photo journal. So I read some words here and they're from um, some different religious worldviews and some positive statements and I read and something calls to me and I just add a photo onto it and it's just something that helps me oh it's a bit wonky there we go it's just something that helps me to stay focused on my journaling but not have the words I think I'm, I'm also a little bit frightened if somebody's going to read my journal it's not like a diary I'm not worried that people are going to you know judge me but I just found it a really difficult concept to do. So this might be something if you're like me, finding journaling a bit of a challenge and you, you'd like to get into it. That's my niece when she was little splashing in puddles. And, and every day as part of my morning practice, I just take some photos that I've put. Sometimes they're not. Sometimes it's the photos that the children have made. And sometimes it's photos that I've made or sometimes it's just something particular that I enjoy. It's, what, it's my favorite star constellation. So this is something that maybe you might want to practice should you choose for your journaling or maybe you're quite, you're quite good at journaling. If you are, please tell me the secrets so that, so that I, too can, I too can continue. Okay, so back onto camera one. I feel like I'm on the TV now. Back to camera one and back to my screen share. And now I'd like to lead you in an imaginative practice. This is something that I do with the children. And I'll invite you to close your eyes in a minute, should you wish, and just to imagine the scene that I'm going to set with you and then to create a response through photography with it. As I said at the beginning of this presentation, today is May the 4th. And for people who enjoy Star Wars, um, it just reminds me about how important stars are in our lives. And I found this quote, and this 
is awesome for me. I can't quite get my head around it that we are 93% stardust. We have calcium in our bones, iron in our veins, carbon in our souls, nitrogen in our brains, 93% stardust with souls made of flames. We are all just stars that have people's names. I'm not quite sure if scientifically that's correct, if it's 93% or a little bit less or more, but it just, it just blows my mind. And I know that there's a, a section of the Quran that says, and we have placed within the heaven great stars and have beautified it for the observers. There's a stunning photo there, wonderful photo with, if you look down at the bottom, there's some people observing the stars. In London, I, I can't see the stars as clear as that, but I'm sure, I'm sure there are places where you are that you might be able to go to see the stars as beautiful as that. So this session is called Starry Night, and I'm going to invite you to make a photo because it can help us to be contemplative. That's a particularly stunning photo that a, a year six child made uh, nearly 10 years ago, actually. Alex, he made that photo when we were learning about twilight. And it, it just, I'm, I'm so in awe of that. I've never made a photo as wonderful as that. And it, it's, it's absolutely gorgeous. And we're going to be wondering about starry nights and then make some photos. So I'm gonna invite you now to be comfortable. Should you wish to close your eyes, you can. If you want to keep them open, that's up to you. Sometimes it helps with the imagination to close your eyes, but it's, it's merely an invitation for you. I'm going to guide you through this. And you'll know when we finish the wanderings, because I'll say, it's time to finish our wandering. Listen to your breath going gently in and out. So you'll know that I finished because I'll, I'll say that. So I invite you to get comfortable. And when you're ready, should you wish to close your eyes? Notice your breathing. Notice when you breathe in and notice when you breathe out. Just listen to yourself breathing. Breathing in and breathing out. Breathing in and breathing out. And we're going to take some time to wonder about a starry night. I invite you to imagine a place outside. Imagine it's a place where you feel safe. Imagine it's a beautiful day. Imagine what you can see. Imagine what you can hear. You notice that the day is turning into dusk. Imagine seeing a few stars in the sky. Notice how this makes you feel. You slowly notice that the dusk is turning into evening and the sky is darker. Notice what shade of colour the sky is. Imagine the sky is full of stars. Some are shining brightly. Some with a small glow. I wonder if you see a shooting star. You notice how you feel in this safe, calm place. I'll give you some time to spend in this place. 
you can sit in the stillness of your imagination or contemplate on the things you are imagining, whatever you feel comfortable with. It's time to finish our wanderings. You can come back to this special place at any time or another special place that you would like to imagine. Notice your breath going gently in and notice your breath leaving gently out. Gently in and gently out. And when you're ready, and if your eyes are closed, slowly open your eyes and have a stretch. I'm gonna invite you in a few moments to create a photo in response to the imaginative experience. And should you want to again, to upload them to the Padlet. Okay, you've got a, a couple of more minutes, but I have to say your photos are absolutely stunning. And what you've brought to us today, the combination is, is pure beauty. There's a picture of a stained glass window that is very uplifting with the sun coming through it. And even the, the, the forget-me-nots, it's my favorite flower actually, you know, looking up into the night sky and remembering loved ones who are now amongst the stars. And, and no photo is wrong or right. It's your interpretation and, and sharing them are just, it's stunning absolutely gorgeous that the carpet of twinkly stars shared with loved ones in the forest each one a sign of hope shining in the darkness oh i'd love to find out a little bit more about the, that photo where that was it's gorgeous thank you and i'm just going to ask you to wonder in your hearts and if you'd like to contribute in the chat that you can i wonder how you felt when you were making your photo and usually when I do this with my with the children that I work with, I invite them to share or not to share, just have a think about it. But if you'd like to share in the chat, that would be that's your choice. And I also wonder what thoughts came into your consciousness. And the reason why I say I wonder rather than what thoughts came into your consciousness, it's more of a direct question inviting a response. Whereas this is just really for you to wander in your own hearts and to share should you wish or not. It's all good. Okay, so if you'd like to continue to write in the chat, that's great. Otherwise, um, I'll move on. Um, maybe your response, maybe you're not called to make a response. Maybe you might want to do something creatively. I know that this time last year I was part of a Learn Radio broadcast where we had a Saturday morning show called Crafty Cafe and I would make some things and they're all available on YouTube as well to watch again. And this was something I made with just an, an old lid. I just painted it in acrylic paints. I'm trying to use up all my acrylic and then not buy any more because I know it's got high content of plastic in it. So now switch into gouache. Um, and just, I just scratched, as I said, my favorite constellation that Ursa made you there. And you might be called to do something different. Um, I am a bit of a, I, I don't throw away anything. And my dad is exactly the same. 
And these were just um, wood slices that he had acquired, as you do. Um, and so he gave me a couple of wood slices and I just painted it in blue and got an old toothbrush and just flicked some paint. And underneath these stars, I've got nails. And then I, I created the, um, the constellation with some metallic thread, just something, something as a response, something that supports my well-being and my creativity. So I wonder what you will be inspired to do. And so I'll just quickly share a little bit of contemplative photography that I was working in schools over the last um, five years. So I was working predominantly in Christian Church of England schools and Catholic schools. And part of the contemplative photography would be to have a different subject each week and work with them so that the children would make some photos linking with um, some quotes absolutely stunning photos that, that children at the ages of seven, eight, nine, and 10 can create. Absolutely wonderful, very, very inspiring. They have had some instruction on creative photography before about it being in focus and complementing backgrounds and, and all of those things. So by the time that they've come to these photos, they, they've gained some of the skills. And this was um, because during the pandemic, I wasn't able to visit schools. I had a school in Manchester who I have a lending library. So I posted out some resources to them. I couldn't post out the seeds, but the head teacher had some seeds. And we just did some work with the children. This was year two. This is the youngest age group I've done. So six years old. Absolutely stunning. There's, the children are, are just amazing. It's not like when I was a child where you would have a photo and you would put it in a, a roll of film and then it, you'd have to take it somewhere and you'd take it would take weeks it felt like it was probably not weeks to have those photos developed but it's just the technology now is so available and organizations and individuals having you know our our own cameras usually on our devices and so to end this session I'd like to share with you some practical activities that you might choose to continue to do um, this is one activity that you might want to do explore a color so look for a color in your homes outside um, in your organization where you live that you feel drawn to and, and make a photo of the color that you've chosen to follow or or maybe another color or a shape or a sign and see where that takes you see where that journey takes you you could also make a triptych so a photo of the same object but in three different angles three different places and just a simple object look at it for two minutes give it your full attention Notice the texture, the line, the form, the shape, and make some photos with a triptych in mind. And I always say to children, or not, you know, this is, this is just purely a suggestion. It might be something that you want to do. You might want to change the color. It's up to you. And this one, I find particularly a challenge to go on a contemplative walk. And when you're ready, just make one photo. I'd like to say that I've done this. I'd like to say that I did it successfully and I spent about 20 minutes looking at um, a body of water with some animals on it. And then I made one photo and then I went away and made another one. So technically I haven't done it yet, but it's something that I'm aspiring to do just to sit and be present with the moment. I know that I did that. I tried to be with uh, Van Gogh sunflowers in central London. There's a museum called um, the National Portrait Gallery. And I remember sitting in front of the sunflowers and seeing hundreds of people come, make a photo, go, or take a photo, go, take a photo. And just to be in the presence of an object, to give it that respect before engraving it on your device. For me personally, it enhances my well-being. Here's another activity that you could do. You could write, I see, I notice, I wonder. And I'll leave the Padlet open till Friday. So if you'd like to contribute to this, you can have a look at any photo that you've got and just say three things about it. What do you see? What do you notice? What do you wonder? What do you see? What do you notice? What do you wonder? I, when I go, to Wales when my husband and I said at the beginning of the presentation he's a paragliding pilot so we will climb up the hill together and then he'll fly off and I'll have to walk down by myself and generally I'm mucking about by doing these things I leave these things everywhere as a little message I don't know if anybody's seen them but uh, it always makes me smile when I do I make a little paraglider on the hill hopefully one day somebody will notice them 
And this was a photo that um, a child made as well. I see, I notice, I wonder. All of these wonderful things that you could contribute to. So as we are closing, as we're coming up to six o'clock, I'll, um, I'll invite you to post your images should you want to with your I see, I notice, I wonder. Like I said, the Padlet will stay open until Friday. And just some closing thoughts uh, before we end. There's a quote by the late Baron Jonathan Sachs, who mentions that children grow into the space we create for them. And if we make that space large, they will grow tall. And with his forgiveness, I've adapted it. And I've said that we grow into the space we create for ourselves. And if we make that space large, we will grow tall. I really hope you've enjoyed listening to me talk about contemplative photography and how that can support your well-being and your creativity. There are my contact details. And if you'd like to ask any questions, in my best of my ability, I'll be able to answer them. But thank you very much. Mm -hmm.